my boy. Hello all and welcome back to another CDI Spotlight. Last month I took a look at The Apprentice. I thought The Apprentice was a very good vertically scrolling platformer. It has its quirks, but it's a fun experience. If you're looking to pick up a copy, try to grab the European version. It's much cheaper than the American version when you can find it. Or, well, at least it was a few years ago when I grabbed this. This month I'm going to take a look at Zombie Dinos from Planet Zeltoid. Fun fact for you, Zombie Dinos is the game that made me decide to start the CDI Spotlight series. Well, that and I knew it would get me to play more CDI games in my collection. Plus, it's hard not to talk about a game with a name like Zombie Dinos from Planet Zeltoid. In any case, I wanted to round out the year with one of the weirder titles in my CDI library, and I think I've got it. In fact, one could even say it's one of the more bizarre titles in my CDI library. Yes, that's right. This was another game from my top 10 bizarre DOS games that you have to try list. <laughs> I actually researched Zombie Dinos after I purchased it earlier in the year and found out that it did get a DOS port, which is why I ended up putting it on that list. Mostly a chance to get to talk about it earlier than, you know, now. Anyway, I'm getting off topic here. Let's talk about Zombie Dinos from Planet Zeltoid. So, Zombie Dinos from Planet Zeltoid is a title that could fit into a ton of different genres. RPGs, side-scroller beat-em-ups, shoot-em-ups... Of course, Zombie Dinos from Planet Zeltoid is an edutainment point-and-click FMV game. I mean, how could you not see that coming? So I hear you ask, what's the story about? Well, let's let Dex give you the breakdown. What are you looking at? Hey, you go get yourself chased uku million light years across the galaxy and see if you bring in your space buggy in one piece. See, we got problems, pal. I'm talking zombie dinos, capiche? They're right behind me. <laughs> what, did you think I was kidding? Now listen up. This ain't no plaything for small fry. This is a time machine. You and me, we gotta save the planet. My name? Well, ever since the brain blobs turned me into a dino droid, folks have been calling me Dexter. You? I'm gonna call you... Rocket Scientist. <laughs> yeah! Now you wanna know how this thing works, Rocket Scientist? Well, all you gotta do is learn to push a few buttons. Thanks, Dex. So here's a fun fact about our friend Dex. He's actually voiced by Cam Clark. Cam is an actor with a lot of roles, but his most notable roles are probably voicing Leonardo from the 1980s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon and Kanada from Akira. He's also lent his voice for multiple video games, including this one. So the object of the game is to go back in time and save dinosaurs from Harry and the Brain Blobs. Harry, an individual with a face only a mother could love, has one goal. That goal is to use dinosaurs to destroy major cities and rule the world. Harry also speaks in rhymes, which gets tiresome. But I figured I'd throw that out there because that's his main shtick. In order to find the dinosaur in each location, the player has to navigate a grid and click random tiles. Each tile could reveal a hint to where the dinosaur is, a hint as to what the dinosaur is, a half-eaten dinosaur, the dinosaur itself, or nothing important at all. So there's not honestly much to talk about gameplay-wise. It's honestly hard to figure out where you need to click in order to find the dinosaur. Each time you click a tile, you get a voiceover that describes what's happening. The hints that they give aren't really that helpful, and even when you do find a dinosaur, you have to answer questions. And that's where the edutainment part comes in. 
In order to figure out which dinosaur you're trying to save, the player needs to find five clues left behind by that dinosaur. The player is equipped with the Gruntometer to help find clues. Using the Gruntometer allows the player to hear a dinosaur roar, as well as get an indication of the direction and distance of the nearest square with a clue. Again, it isn't as intuitive as it sounds, or at least it wasn't when I played through the game. When you do find a dinosaur, you have to fight off the brain blobs in order to save it. The brain blobs are beaten by getting answers about dinosaurs correctly. Harry is the one asking the questions, rhymes and all. The questions are pretty tough, but the player has access to an encyclopedia to figure out the answers. It's hard to look for answers though because you're never really sure which dinosaur you're looking for, unless of course you really know your dinosaurs. If you get the questions right, you save the dinosaur, but if you get too many questions wrong, the brain blobs take the dinosaur and you watch it as it destroys the city. Melbourne, Sydney, major Australian cities are ruthlessly being victimized by a wild and raging Stegosaurus. Scientists and citizens are equally confounded by how this ancient monster surfaced in their humble homeland down under. And that's really it for the game. Ultimately, the player has to save three dinosaurs from Harry and his brain blobs in order to win the game. Oh, yeah! You have done well, friend. Here, have a look at your own bright future. People are celebrating in the streets today, rolling out the red carpet for a mysterious hero whom scientists report has saved them from annihilation. The truth behind this tale of zombie dinos may never be proven, but these partiers aren't asking any questions. So yeah, if you like dinosaurs, then you may like zombie dinos from Planet Zeltoid. Honestly, I feel like the main appeal for this game is just the ability to say, yeah, I have zombie dinos from Planet Zeltoid. <laughs> what, you mean you haven't heard of it? For an edutainment game, it's alright. The developers tried to make a unique puzzle type game, and I do think they succeeded there. I mean, I certainly can't think of another game that's like this. The FMV is actually pretty decent in my opinion too. I like the Dex Puppet, and Cam really gives a good performance in this game. The Brain Guy gives a great performance as well. The only thing I don't like about him though is his costume design. It looks revolting. The gameplay, as I mentioned, is just okay. It's just pointing and clicking. Like I've mentioned in previous reviews, if you're not into point and click games, you're probably not going to be into this. Zombie Dinos is probably not a game I would recommend for its gameplay, but for its ridiculous premise and design. I mean, it even has its own kick-ass theme song. That gives it an extra point in my book. Yeah, that's all Zombie Dinos from Planet Zeltoid has to offer. It's an interesting title, but pretty much in name only. That being said, I give Zombie Dinos two faces that only a mother could love out of five. At this point, I'd like to take a moment to say thanks to those that have stuck with me throughout the various CDI spotlights. 
I am planning on making more spotlights, but I'll probably mix them in with my normal reviews. I'll probably make another video later in the month just to go into more detail about, you know, what my plans are for next year. So, with that being said, as always, thank you for watching. Thank you.